I'm out here again. This will probably be part two of the actual, well, the actual first part of my kayak remodel for the Perception Outlaw 11.5. Got a few more things to do today, finish up that I didn't finish up uh, the last time. So let's get at it. Here we go so one of the things I want to talk about today is with the new lithium battery I have to put it in a different container I bought an orange uh, Bass Pro uh, dry box but it wouldn't fit in it I guess the dimensions they have on those are outside dimensions and not inside dimensions so had to buy a new box found this survivor dry box this is also Bass Pro again nothing sponsored of course hmm. But this was only, I think, I think it was $19.99, if I remember right, or $17.99. Maybe I'll, you know, I may put it on the screen somewhere. It's kind of cool. It's got a little um, compass in it. Probably never use that. But I thought it was kind of cool. So let me show you how I'm going to have the, the battery set up. So it's got, a, it's got a seal in it built into the lid. There's a seal in here around that. And the battery will just go in here. It fits really nice. Um, it closes perfectly. There's a little gap at the top of it. So where there is some space up here above the battery. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pieces of foam noodle like I did on, on my other little dry box that I did for the other battery around the sides of it just to help keep it from sliding back and forth. My goal is to have a switch installed. Man, it'd be cool if I could take that compass out and put my switch right there. I wonder if I can do that. I just thought of that. Anyway, you know, I don't care about that part. At least my thoughts anyway. But if I could install it there, that would be pretty slick. I don't know if it would fit. You can see here, it is kind of recessed down in. Get a better angle there. There you go. Kind of recessed down in here. But that would be slick if that would fit. I don't know. I may try that. Of course, if I put a hole in it and can't do it, then I gotta cover up a hole. Anyway, got some switches. I don't know if I'm gonna use this one that I bought. This is the this is one of our uh, trail gear ones at Bass Pro. Usually used to hook up for other items like UTVs, ATVs, stuff like that. From what I've seen, anyway. But I also picked up these. These are blue water or blue water LED. Um, these are accessory switches, so they're water resistant. Doesn't say waterproof, but neither does the other one. Nope, I didn't say it is either. But if I understand this right, it's an LED. So it have a little light built into it so that I can actually see it if it does get a little bit dark. And maybe that one will work really nice if it does actually light up. I don't know why it would say LED if it doesn't light up. All right, so I may try and use this one first. I'll have to measure and see if I can put it in top there where the compass is. If not, I'll probably just install it on the side somewhere. I don't know if I'll put it in the top or if I'll put it down here. That's a little more awkward. It'd be great if I could put it on the top. So we'll see if we can figure that out. Also, I forgot I do have a quick disconnect. This is the same brand as the trail gear. I can get that in the picture here trail gear quick disconnect plug set this will be similar to the one that I had that I've used on the other orange box for my other kayak battery a little overcast today so I've got I'm out from under the carport hopefully there won't be any rain on me although the new Acaso is weather resistant and potentially almost sort of kind of waterproof <laughs> I don't want to really test it out today with that. I'm going to try and take this compass out. It's It's got to just... Whoa. That's freaky. Can you see that? I guess my 
screwdriver is slightly magnetized. Okay. Enough fifth grade science. Let's see if I can pop this bad boy out of here. I get up underneath it. It looks like it's barely in here anyway. Probably just hot glued it in or something. There's nothing on the other side holding it in. If it breaks, not a big deal because, you know, I'm not going to use it anyway. Come on. Come on. Dang it. Oh, there we go. There we go. Come on, baby. No, don't go back in. I don't want to break the outside of my box either, though. I didn't think about that. Of course. Break the box, I gotta go buy another one. Can't imagine what's holding it in there like that. That's strong. Concerned. I think I'm just gonna drill it and try to pull it out because I'm really tearing up the top of my box. It's probably not the right way to do it, but. I don't need a compass. Oh. Um, there's a liquid in it. Did anybody else know that? <laughs> I don't know what this is. Okay. Maybe that's how it floats. Obviously, I don't know anything about compasses. And why... They have a liquid in them. Somebody comment if you care. That's going to be a good video right there. That's shaking. There we go. Alright, I'm going to pause this and get this liquid out of here. So without overstating the obvious, I don't know anything about compasses, which I just said, but... You know, it smells kind of like alcohol, like a rubbing alcohol or something, but I don't know what's in it. If you care, make a comment. I'm going to try to drill a hole in this. Maybe it won't shake the camera too much. Let's see what we can do here. Probably should drill a pilot hole, but... It does have glue on it. going to work. I mean it works, it's just I don't want to cut this whole thing out here. I'm going to have to get a different bit. This is just too big, it's too broad. I've got another one but you know, I can't find half my stuff. Dremel to the rescue. Time I get that big enough. The drill bit, I won't need my Dremel. There we go. Let's do this like probably not the right way. That might be like a perfect fit. Well, I wore it down somehow. I don't know what I did, man. Jeez. I just thought of something. I could probably drill it from the other side with my... I can't remember what that's called. Maybe I'll put that on the screen, too. We well, don't drill through the table. Let's do this, like, extremely professionally here and hold it up with my tape on one side. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. All right, I think that's going to do it. Just going to get some silicone, clean it up. Because these snap in. I don't know if you can see the little clips on them here. Got the little clips. And that'll snap in. Once I snap it in, it, it's you can get them back out, but it's just going to be more difficult. But you can see it's already starting to kind of go almost all the way in it. I may have to clean it up just a little bit more. And then I'll get me some silicone. Put along the edge of this. So when it drops down on there, I can seal it off good. Take this off. All right. I'm using this Loctite. I've used this before. This is a Marine. It's a fast cure adhesive and sealant. Because I don't want this to fall back out, of course. Let's see if we can get her in here. Hopefully I drilled it out enough. 
to where it'll actually go all the way in now that I got all this on here. I'm going to get that on there. Hopefully that'll go through far enough to where it'll click and where I can get the wiring. Of course, I didn't think about that very good, did I? That is awesome. Oh, it dropped right in there. That is B E A beautiful. I'll fix this up. Get a little more in there here and there. I don't want to get it all over the switch like I just did. Dang it. But anyway, I don't want my switch to get locked tight. It's a little caulk joke there for you guys. Alright. Let that dry. Let's look at the inside and make sure I can actually reach the wires. The terminals. Oh yeah. Look at that. I'll clean that up. Once it dries, that is going to be sweet. Yeah, hopefully it illuminates. That would be even better. A little bonus there if it does. Well, it's getting a little dark on me. So I do have the switch in there. I'm going to let that dry, I think, overnight. So I don't have to mess with that. And then um, I'll get everything wired up because I'm going to have to split off of this somehow anyway. I've got a quick disconnect. But I don't really need one in a sense. I mean, I can turn it on and off with the switch, obviously. But with the quick disconnect, if I could get it hooked up to where that's on the outside. Over here. It's outside of here. And I can run these wires inside and connect up. Then that would be better, obviously. Because then I can disconnect from the outside and I can use this battery on either kayak. Even though eventually I'll just have it on one. I am going to need some type of a grommet here and I ordered something but again I don't have those yet either so hopefully I'll get those pretty soon and we can I can finish the battery box up but I'm going to let this dry and leave my battery in here because that's where it's going to be anyway and it looks like it it just misses <laughs> the battery and even if it wasn't I think it's short enough that it wouldn't hit it anyway but I think it's going to be good to go. So, one other thing I want to work with tonight before it gets too dark. Alright, like I said, it's been kind of overcast, as you can kind of see. It's getting a little bit late, but it's not too bad. I had to break out the old ring light to get us a little extra light here. What I'm going to try to do is show you the new setup for the Perception Outlaw 11.5, where I'm going to have the new, not the new transducer, but what I'm, well, it is going to have the new transducer that works with my 73 SV for my Garmin. And uh, I just put the new, I got the Scotty mount on it. I got the mount for the actual graph is now on the kayak. I don't have a way to lift it up right now. I don't have a lot of time. So here we go. I'm just going to show you what it does. <clears throat> so this from the front, might not have a lot on the front, but like I did, you probably saw it. If you watched the last video, you saw that I moved the single ball mount deal that you can get for specifically for this Perception Outlaw and I put on the side because I'm really pretty sure I want to keep my video um, straight in the middle I don't want it coming from the side so this is for the Garmin 73 SV here's the back of it I'll try to keep out of the way so we don't have any shadows but there's the back of it so you've got your power and then this is where your transducer hooks in this should be that's orange but probably looks a little yellow with the light so I'm going to hook those up and just I've got my little battery actually I don't need the other battery I forgot the other batteries for my trolling motor so but I've got my other little battery in here with my quick disconnect on it and this has got a quick disconnect built into the wiring where I had it on my boat so that plugs into this on the end and Red is your power, that's gonna go in there. And then the orange, what I had to do, I think I said this in the last video, maybe I didn't, I had to buy an adapter cable. This will give me sonar and down scan. But I had to buy the adapter because the new transducer that does only sonar and down is a four pin. But this obviously is not a four pin back there. So you gotta buy the adapter for it so you can connect it up. So that's what I bought. 
I think the adapter was like twelve bucks, twelve ninety nine, something like that. And then the um, as you saw in the other video, if you saw that, the new transducer was only nine nine bucks. So I'm gonna put this together. Let me see if I can get my camera set up right and show you everything, and then we'll see if she's working. So I'm gonna snap the graph in the front, take the case off, oh, and get out of the way. Got too many shadows. Snap this in. Set it down, and you snap it to the top. There it goes. Should be in. Now, I'll connect the battery to my quick disconnect. There's that. And let's see if I can see this, or if you guys can see this. That's that side. That's this side. Just connects in, snaps in. I put the right side in. There it is. All right, so snapped in. Just going to set it off to the side. That's my power. Let's um, hook the transducer up first. Okay, well, my memory card filled up. I don't know if any of that actually went through or not. So let's try this again. So what I did, I'll kind of give you the Reader's Digest version here for you people who are old enough to know what that is. Quick disconnect. Going into here to my 8 amp hour Cabela's battery. And then, <laughs> I got my wires everywhere. Anyway. So you got your red for your power. That's coming from the battery, obviously. Orange, which may look a little yellow here. Orange is going to down into here to the transducer. So those are all hooked up. Those are all on. I said on the other one, I don't know if it videoed or not because I don't know when my memory card got full. There's a little notch built into these, so make sure you line your notches up so you don't mess up your pins. Back to the front. Let's see if she powers up. That's a beautiful sign right there. Now it may give me a signal that I need to load a certain transducer on here. I'm not sure how that'll work because I do have a different transducer than the one that is actually built for or I may have to go to settings to actually do that and get it set up. Obviously I'm not on the water. <laughs> All right, I'm going to menu. See if I can get my camera to sit kind of still for you guys. So you're going to system settings, my vessel, my vessel, transducer type, and then I'm going to go to the GT20. Boom! There it is, GT20. I don't know if you guys can see this with the light; it's so bright on the back screen. But there it is. There, the GT20. It'll let me click it. There you go. Okay. And then I should be good to go back. Home screen. Sonar. There it is. So now I've got clear view. A while ago it was only showing traditional. It's only showing sonar. Now clear view's up. Of course it won't work because, you know, it's I'm not in the water. So I'm going to shut it down so I don't run my um, sonar, my transducer too much when it's not actually in the water. All right, y'all. So that's it on getting all that set up. Got the new transducer ready. It'll work with that Garmin. Um, if you do something like that, always make sure you go in and select the correct transducer. If you don't, it's either not going to work right, you're either going to mess up your transducer, you could mess up the system. I don't know what could happen. Cats and dogs could be living together. I don't know. But make sure... Dude. Hey, I'm videoing here. Anyway. Make sure you select the correct transducer to go with the unit that you're actually using. Appreciate you guys. Thanks again for watching. Make sure y'all like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. A little bonus footage of Rocky. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, come here. Come here. What are you doing? That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Oh no. What have I got? I got all kinds of smells, don't I? Huh? That's a good boy. You gonna go get your ball? Where's your ball? <laughs> go get your ball. He's probably not gonna go get the ball.
He's still looking for moles. I'm telling you. That's a good boy. You can get your bottle. There you go. Good boy. Get it. We'll do his Chewbacca noise. Get it. He got a little Chewbacca in him. 